Uh, no, don't do that now. I just started again. <laughs> let's say that uh, let's say that this function was. Uh, let's use something we can relate to here, like um, the amount you have eaten today. Okay, so this is going to be capital E. Okay, E of T. <laughs> okay, E of T is amount you have eaten today. Um, let's say that, whoops, where do you write this? You're confused. Let's say that R of T is the rate that you're, that you're eating at. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the rate. So R of T equals what? How do we, how, what is, how is it related to E of T? No, the rate R of T is is E prime, yeah, it's E prime of T. It's the rate you're eating at, all right? We need more space here. If you... <laughs> what? I, the, I don't know. You want to give it a name now? That's how fast you're changing how fast you're eating, right? You're, you're, you're wolfing down the food and then you kind of slow down and nicely eat it and then you, and you speed up and you start shoveling it in again. And, what? Okay, well, we'll save that for, that'll be off the record after. Okay. Well, it would be, it would be completely not a straight line because right now you're, right now the rate that you're eating is zero, right? Most of you, I think, <laughs> except for you, but. <laughs> You. Um, if you wanted to write a function here for the other way around, right? If you want to write a function for this, what e of t is here? Like, if we want to know um, the amount you've eaten at, uh, I don't know, at 18 hours today, it could be if we happen to know the amount you had eaten at midnight, the beginning, or whenever you're starting to do the time. This is plus, what do we, what do we add on here? The integral, right? If we want to know how much you've eaten, that like, then the amount you've eaten at 18, okay? The amount you've eaten at 18 here, it's however much you had eaten at zero plus the net change in how much you eat between zero and 18, right? So before we write the integral, let's write that. Let's say net change in amount eaten <laughs> between 0 and 18, 18 hours, between uh, midnight and 6 o'clock tonight. Let's not, uh, <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> you're saying, you're saying that the rate, you're, the rate is negative at some point, is that what you're saying? I, I, it, technically, it yes, it could be, yeah, that's true. I don't think we should use eating. Why? No, I think this is good. Well, so it doesn't matter if you can have negative. Well, it's good you can have negative. We don't want something that's all positive, right? What? No, no, we're already going. We're already going down this road. We're gonna stick with it, okay? Let's not give up part way here. If you want to know the amount, the the, the amount you've eaten at 18, it, like it makes sense, right? How much have you eaten by six o'clock tonight? Well, however much you had eaten at then plus the change in amount you've eaten between then, right? That makes sense for any function like that you, you think of, right? The amount at this point is however much you started with there plus whatever change happened between those times, right? Does that make sense? If you want to use integrals for this, you say the amount at 18 is the amount at zero plus the net change in the amount eaten between those two is the integral from 0 to 18 of the rate with respect to whatever we're using your time, I guess, right? Or in other words, it's the integral from 0 to 18 of, what was it called, R of T? DT. E. Uh, you could, yep. It is the same thing, you're right. We should write that down. 
Uh, let's uh, write that down here. Uh, so we're going to put an or here. E0 plus integral from 0 to 18 of E prime of T, right? Because those are the same things. Now, this is just some, this is where this, this is where this fundamental theorem of calculus is going here. This is, uh, this, this is, um, some constant, right? You've actually already seen this as the other form of the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you, if you, uh, move this to the other side here, you have that formula that we have for evaluating integrals. Maybe we can put that over here. I should have just used a different page for this. Yeah. Okay. Well, use your page extender tool to no, add paper right. to the page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you see this? <laughs> Do you see this? If we rearrange that, if we put the E of 0 on the other side, what do we get? We get E at 18 minus, whoops, that's not a minus. That's two minuses. E of zero, e, e of 18 minus E of 0, right? You see if I'm moving this to the other side? You want to see it actually go to the other side? There, it went to the other side. That was the right one. That's the one I want to go over there. Oh, okay. Oh, right. You're right. I see. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. No, you're right. It's the wrong one. Okay. You need to see it on this one? Yeah. There we go. Oh, much better. Much clearer now, eh? Okay. Um, it goes on the other side. What's left on this side? 0 to 18 of R of T, dt. This is the rate of change of E, right? If you... This is how we were evaluating integrals, right? This was, we used any antiderivative of this function. The way we saw it before was we said, if we want to, if we want to do the integral from A to B of some function, how do we evaluate that? You need to know something about this. You need, you need some antiderivative of that, right? Like if this is x squared, what do you use? Yeah, you use an antiderivative, and it doesn't matter which one it is, right? So since here E and R are related that way, right? This is the derivative of E, or in other words, this E here, it's the integral. This is that formula you had before, okay? This is the formula you had before. It basically says that um, the integral of the derivative gives you the gives you the function itself. Okay, that's essentially what this is saying here. The integral of the derivative gives you some function here. I know that there's this constant in here, and we'll, we'll get to it in a second when we make this a variable. But I wanted to point out first that this is this formula you had before. If you have some function, as long as you know it's an antiderivative for it, that's how you evaluate the integral. That's one form of that fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay? We need to stop and... Uh, no, we need to stop and rest or start the next part here. Um, what we're going to do here is stop this.